Amen. Good. Good. Thank you. All right, let's get our Bibles open now. Time to get in the book. Time to get in the book. Uh, how many of y'all started a new and a fresh? Reading your Bible through in January. Raise your hand. That's about everybody in here. Praise the Lord. You hang in there. Don't get, don't give up. Don't get weary. It, you're going to get bogged down a few places in there. And, and it's going to be, you ain't going to understand nothing you're reading. And the devil's going to say, you're wasting time. That's when he'll jump on you if you ain't careful. Now, the reason stuff like in there is because God didn't write the Bible just for a bunch of 21st century brats. He is in there throughout history and the future. That's why all that stuff's back there in Chronicles. There's a reason for it. And all them names, you'll be shocked one of these days. You get to heaven, you find out all the stuff that's in there. You say, oh my goodness, I read that and I thought it was boring. It was great, you know. You'll be, you'll, it's, it ain't, there ain't nothing in there by accident. And uh, so we're in Philippians chapter 3 tonight. And we're going to hurry along here and try to hit the high spots of this. Not get bogged down on one or two verses this evening if we can help it. But um, also try to follow the leadership of the Lord's Spirit uh, as, as we do this. Now, we got down to verse 9 last week, uh, being him not having our own rights. Remember I talked about our righteousness is not ours, and uh, it's all in him. It's all in the blood of Jesus and uh, the fellowship of, of, his, of what the Lord's done for us. The righteousness which is of God by faith. Now, I want you to keep your Bibles open in your lap. Because we're going to be going back and forth, back and forth in this chapter tonight. Verse 10. One of the great verses in the Bible. Verse 10. I know that I say that a lot. This is one of the most well-known quoted verses in the whole Bible and for preachers. That I may know him, Jesus, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Now, uh... He said, I want to know him. I want to know him. The difference between a Christian and a Buddhist and a Muslim and all that because they don't say that. Hindus, Buddhists don't go around and, and say, I just want to know Buddha better. They, none of them knows him. And, and the is, Muslims don't either. They don't say, I'd sure like to get to know Muhammad, but he's dead and gone. But we, we don't just say, I want to know about him. We want to know him personally. And if you're saved, you know Jesus. You know, people say, you know Jesus. Yes, we do. I talked to him today. Talked to him a while ago. Talk, I've talked to him all day today. And you, you, uh, uh, he said, I may know him. And Paul saying here, I want to know him better and better. All them songs, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus. All them songs, more of his saving grace to see, more of his blood who died, love who died for me. Uh, all of them songs, know him. Uh, I want to know more about my Jesus, you know, uh, stuff like that. Uh, I, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection. My goodness. Uh, he said uh, his resurrection was power uh, and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. There's a verse you'll never hear a modern day TV mega preacher preach on. You got a big group of people here and they're all uh, in their 30s and early 40s, and they're all smiling. They all got nice vans outside, and their kids play soccer, and they got money. And that's the majority that you're following. You hear him say, uh, I'm going to learn about the fellowship of his sufferings. That don't fit in. That don't fit in. Every sermon in them kind of churches are teaching you how to cope with what you went through today and how you should feel better about yourself and how you should learn to appreciate how good you are. A uh, bunch of bull like that. And what about a message on the fellowship of his sufferings? You know, you know, every real Christian that's ever been had to suffer. You know, if a, per, if a preacher leaves out suffering as a Christian out of his preaching, he, he's cheating people and they're, miss, and they're going to be very shocked when it happens to them because they wasn't expecting it. They thought everything going to be great and are going to have a nice car and never get sick. You know, and people say we're going to heal you all the time. They'll get sick. You watch them. All of them get sick. Uh, they'll get sick. Every single one of them gets sick. Uh, and, and we talked a lot about that last week. Uh, the, the fellowship of his suffering. You know, uh, the preachers say, no 
there's, there, there's a price to pay for power. And the price to pay for the power of God is suffering. Man, I don't like that. I don't like that. My flesh cringes at that. Because I think, gosh, I don't want to suffer. I don't like to suffer. I've suffered a little bit. I ain't had suffering like a lot of people have. I mean, some of God's people went through unbelievable stuff. Uh, I, would, I would strongly recommend everybody, everybody in here needs to listen to that uh, message by uh, Dr. Peter Ruckman entitled, The Christian's Favorite Verse. And it's Romans 8, 20. Everybody in here needs to listen to that. Because it, it puts you in reality. About bad stuff does happen. Bad stuff does happen. Eventually, it's going to happen to you and it's going to happen to me. Amen? You say, well, I just don't talk like that. It's gloom and doom. No, it's called reality. It's called reality. So when it hits, you'll say, well, he told us. But they ain't told us it's coming. So now's my turn. And help me to suffer and take it like a man. Amen? You get a bad report at the doctor. I mean, it's coming, y'all. Amen? All the people that don't believe in it, it's coming to them too. Uh, there, is, there is man born into trouble as the sparks fly upward. And we can shout, we can rejoice, we can enjoy the Lord, we can shout every day of our life. But let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. That's what he said. That's right. And so, not learn the fellowship of his sufferings. I don't, I don't know if I understand all that. I, I know he was beaten, he was mocked, he was betrayed, he was made fun of. All that we should learn how to deal with. Uh, the Bible said, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Somebody makes fun of you for your stand for the Lord. I know young people say, well, I, I wanted to live right and I went to school and I told them I was a Christian and they laughed at me so I just gave it up. No, no, that's good. That's good. You're in good company if they laugh at you for going to church and serving God. You're in good company. Look, I'd hate... If, if this world likes you, like you're, you're messed up, buddy. Uh, they, if you, you learn how to do right, and somebody not going to like you. Everybody's not going to like you if you try, try to do right. We don't want to make enemies. I don't, I don't try to make enemies. You don't have to go out and start fights. You just stand. You just stand. The fight, they'll, it'll come. I guarantee you, you stand in the river going that way uh, 10 miles an hour. You don't have to go look for resistance. It, it'll hit you. And so, uh, that's what that verse is talking about. That I may know him, the fellowship he's suffering, be made conformable unto his death. Ready and willing, he said, if I have to die for him, I'm going to be made conformable. If that's what it takes. And Paul did. Paul did. He got his head cut off. That boy got it. The guy that wrote this got his head cut off, y'all. Where was his miracle and something good going to happen to you today? You know, you imagine... You imagine somebody sitting out there, Paul's on the way, there's guillotine, something good is going to happen. He'd probably look back and say, yep, sure is. I'm going to heaven here in a little bit. Uh, but so, uh, it, ain't, it ain't all down here. You've got to look up there and we'll see that. Verse 11, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Now, there again, you got to learn how to read the Bible. He was not saying... If I do right and do the best I can, the Lord will resurrect me. That wasn't what he said. Look, it don't matter what you do, right or wrong, you're going to be resurrected. Everybody is. Sinners, saints, and everybody will be in resurrection. Now, we know there's more than one resurrection. Uh, and he's talking about that further. I want to attain to that resurrection. And you read verse 12 along with verse 11. Not as though I had already attained... Either we're already perfect when I get that new body, now be perfect, but I follow after if that I may be apprehended that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. He said, I want to grab on to what's grabbing me. I want to apprehend what's apprehending me. That I may apprehend what's apprehending me. And what he's saying is, uh, if, I, if I can say it right, he's saying, I want to be right and be ready so that when I obtain that resurrection, I'm going to be shouting happy. You know, a verse you can use that is Hebrews 11 where, you remember them people said, uh, it said all these people went through this suffering that they might obtain a better resurrection. You remember reading that scripture? That's something. Man. Everybody's going to have a resurrection. 
But some of them have a better one than others. Some to everlasting shame, contempt. Some to everlasting life. And so uh, uh, that's what he's talking about there in that verse. Let's move along here. Uh, verse 12. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. Now, the word perfect in the Bible, several, two or three people call perfect in the Bible. People say, well, nobody's perfect. And we say that what we mean is sinless. And there is nobody sinless. The Bible said Noah was perfect in his generation. The Bible said Job was perfect. And that simply means his heart was perfect with God. Didn't mean he hadn't ever done nothing wrong. You understand that? You got, there again, you got to learn how to read the Bible. The Bible's its own interpreter. The Bible's its own dictionary. And the Bible is its own commentary. And, and you, you just keep reading that scripture and it starts shedding light on itself. And the way you know a nut is they'll take a verse. I'm, I'm going to show you some of that stuff Sunday night maybe. Uh, that verse that I read the other day about said, uh, you know, Bible said Jesus went to this man and he, he went down and seen this man and everything. And he said, and as Jesus said at meat in his house. He said, I didn't think Jesus had a house. That's what it said when Jesus said at meat in his house. But it's talking about that man's house. He said, how do you know? Because the other scriptures say, the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Now a nut will ignore that clear one and build a doctrine on this obscure verse when it said it meet in his house. Right there it says it. Right there it says it. Jesus had a house. No, it don't. It said he said it meet in his house. Well, there it says it, his house. No, it's talking about the guy's house that he was at. Learn how to read the Bible. It's a two-edged sword. You'll cut yourself with it. See, there's a lot of places like it. I'll show you all some of that Sunday night, Lord willing. And I'm planning on, uh, you got to learn how to read. And this verse is like that too, that I may obtain to the resurrection. He wasn't saying, well, if you'll live good enough, you might make it. I mean, it wasn't saying that at all. Uh, verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I ain't made it yet. But he said, I'll tell you what I do. Forgetting those things which are behind Reaching forth on those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. There's your good verse. Remember right there. There's your another good one. Don't get hung up on your past. Don't get hung up on past mistakes. Past, like, we all do this. I'm guilty of this. I sometimes I'll be doing real good. And the devil, you'll see somebody or see go somewhere, and something triggers and brings up your past and some. You, where you really done wrong or you fell the Lord, and then, boy, he'll jump on you with both feet and say, you ain't, you ain't nothing. You ain't, God ain't really, yes, you know, the Lord's done. He'll, he, he'll do that. And, and Paul, he, he, had, he had Christians murdered and had them put in prison. And he said, I forget that stuff. He said, I forgot it, and I'm going to press forward and keep pressing forward. You cannot, as my pastor said, you've heard me say it a bunch of times, a lot of people let the failures of yesterday and the fears of tomorrow rob them of the joy of serving God today. You can't do nothing about your past. Done. Done. You say, well, I'm doomed. There ain't nothing. No, 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 no. You can't do nothing about yesterday. You can't do nothing about tomorrow. I'll tell you what you can do. You can get in this altar tonight and you can start all over and you can make a fresh start and say, Lord, I'm going to live for you today. You can do that. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of things itself. Sufficient today the evil thereof. And so uh, that's what he's saying here. I forget those things which are behind. Reaching forth to those. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. And he's saying like, I'm, I'm running a race. I want the crown. I, I want to be rewarded. Uh, you've heard me preach before. I've preached it all over this country. You cross the finish line. You finish the job God give you to do. Don't matter. You go through a divorce. You'll go through a. You'll go through a uh, sickness. You'll go through a family member turning on you. You'll go through a church split. You'll go through. You'll go through some kind of marriage problem or a big mess. And right then the devil will knock you out if you ain't careful. But you make up your mind by the grace of God. I may come in on crutches, but I'm coming in. I may come in hobbling, but I'm coming in. And the Lord will bless you for that. You make up your mind, bless the Lord, I might have to crawl on my hands and knees across the finish line, but I'm going to finish. 
I'm not going to give up. Make up your mind. Settle it. Don't say, well, I'm going to try and see if this works out. If it don't, my old buddy's back there waiting. I'll go party. No, you ain't never going to get nowhere like that. You make up, I mean, you make up your mind. The old, the old people used to say, hell or high water. And it'd be both of them boys over with, probably. <laughs> you, I ain't promised you a rose garden. But i tell you one thing. Uh, there'll be somebody there with you. Amen. I'd rather be in, I'd rather be in a mess with him than having it living on easy street without him. I'd rather be broke and have him as to have a million dollars and not have him. Any day of the week, brother. Any day of the week. So he said, I press. Now, verse 15 sort of changes gears here a little bit. And we'll have to hurry and finish out this chapter now. So stay with me here. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, there it is again. You can't be sinless, but your heart can be perfect with God. Let us, what does it say? As many be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. He said, keep your heart right. The Lord will show you what you need to do. Verse 16. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule let us mind the same thing. All the new modern versions of the Bible, take a, hit, a fit right there and change it. Uh, worrying as they do in most places like that. But uh, what that's saying is, we all go by the same standard, by the same. Uh, you hear preachers preach, what's right for one is right for the other, and what's wrong for one is wrong for the other. What's wrong for me is wrong for you. What's right for me is right for you. Okay? God don't have a different set of rules for everybody. You don't, you don't, I, I had a uh, uh, school teacher's wife tell me, right after I got saved, hadn't been saved very long, and uh, I went to their house, and she answered the door, and she said, now Danny, I've heard about you going to church and everything, and I said, well, thank you, I appreciate that, and she said, she said, now, and you just, you know, you have to do what you think is right, and I haven't been saved, but about three or four months, and I remember thinking, that don't sound right. And I haven't been saved no time. I haven't read the Bible. But something in me said, that don't sound right. You don't, you don't get to make up your rules about what you feel is right. That's what we, our generation doing. Everybody doing what's right in their own eyes. Any old ungodly, filthy, wicked lifestyle you can imagine, somebody's going to claim it's all right now and live like it. You know, there's this, you're about this singer who has a number one hit on the Secular gospel charts, Flamey Grant. It's a boy dressed as a girl, claiming to be a girl, and has a number one hit. Whole album coming out with a new one pretty soon. Really? I mean, good night, y'all. I mean, you can do what you want to. I ain't going to be your judge or her, him, shim, whatever, whatever it is. I, I'm not trying to be a judge. I don't hate nobody. But great day in the morning. What's wrong with the churches? She's, she, him, it sung at the, it was at the Dove Awards. Flame, you know, Amy Grant, the famous gospel singer. Flamey Grant. Flamey Grant. Great day in the morning. Flamey Grant. I mean, flame, that's good. That, very, very fitting. <laughs> Flames. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm telling you, y'all, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. You know, you say, well, uh, and he said, I grew up in church and I just grew up in church and it, I was never accepted for who I really am, that I'm really this way uh, or whatever. And uh, oh, God. Oh, I mean, you know, I, if, if we let this generation of homosexuals convince us they were born like this, you know what's coming next? The next generation of pedophiles is going to say, we were born like this. And we can't have. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. And. Lord have mercy. You say, well, Christians shouldn't judge. It, it ain't got nothing to do with judge. He said, let's all walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. What is that? Is this. It's not how you feel. You know, I might have grew up all my life feeling like I should kill people. There are people like that. I've wanted to a time or two. <laughs> but not long. had not y'all thought about what, like a ring in their neck? Hey, Amen. We all have. Uh, but, but, you know, you can't. You can't say, well, since I feel like this, it's right. I was born this way. 
Hey, I got something to tell you here tonight. It don't matter if you was born that way. Still wrong. Right? You might have been born a little kid having murder in your heart. That don't make it right. That's right, brother. You was born wrong. We was all born wrong. That's why you must be born again. And so, so uh, he said, let's all walk by the same rule. You, you can't have a church where everybody's saying what they think. Now, I'm not talking about every little detail. We disagree on minor stuff that the Bible don't mention. But we can't disagree on what the Bible says, y'all. On that, we got to agree. You might look at Scripture different. Well, I'm sure we all do. I'm not talking about stuff like that. I'm talking about what we can't, we can't say, well, I got my own little set of rules, and I live by what I think. And somebody else say, well, I got my own little set of rules, and I live by what I think. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. If this says one thing, and I say another thing, I'm wrong, this is right. That's how cults get started. You know how cults get started? Where the, the man in charge says he's right no matter what the Bible says. That, that's crazy. You, you might be crazy follow a man like that. You know what I say? If I say something against this book, you let it go in one ear and out the other. And if I get up here and I start denying this book, shoot me. <laughs> and act like it's an accident. Say amen right there. I promise you, if I get up here and start saying stuff against this book, I've lost, I've lost it. I've done went crazy. Go ahead and put me out of my misery. Uh, but uh, don't hold your breath, brother, because them day I ain't coming. Uh, look here. He said, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. 17. Brethren, be followers together of me. People say, well, I don't think you're supposed to follow a man. If he's following Jesus, you can follow him. That's exactly what he was saying. Be followers of me and mark them which walk as you do have for us for an example. For many, verse 18, this is sad. Here he starts crying. He starts crying right in this. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. <laughs> now normally, anybody that's an enemy of cross of Christ would be, you know, Marilyn Manson, Little Nos, some fool like that. You know, his little bloody 666 tennis shoes on, you know, or, or some Taylor Swift done fell off the edge, y'all. She done got wicked as the devil. You demonic stuff in her. I don't even know. I don't know one of her songs. I've got one somebody told me about the other day. And uh, I, I think she started off probably as a nice little girl a long time ago, but she, she's got an extra demonic anointing on her in the last few months because she said, everywhere you, everywhere you look, when somebody gets that famous that quick, it's demonic. It's demons. And uh, uh, it, he said, I, they're, their enemy is the cross of Christ. Upside down cross? That's the most blasphemous thing you can do is, a, is the upside down cross and make fun of the cross of Calvary. Cross that Jesus died on for our sins. Lord, have mercy. How awful, how awful, how awful. How wicked, how wicked, how ungodly that is. Lord, have mercy, y'all. Um, uh, and then, then, he, then he says here in verse 17, I'm sorry, verse 18, he said, I'm, I'm crying. And, and I got to thinking about that. I thought, how long has it been since we wept over the situation of our country, over our neighbors and friends? Seriously, really. Now, you know me, I'm not a I'm not a big crier. I know I know people just cry every time. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> maybe they got a good soft heart or maybe they got maybe they're a nervous wreck. I don't know, but I, there are some people that I mean you just look at them and they start crying, everything you just cry. And and but you say, Well, I'll well, tell you what, that's better than being so hard hearted that you can't never shed a tear. I worry about myself if I go a long time and, and can't cry. Really, something wrong with you if you can't cry. You've done got your heart too hard. Once in a while, it ought to well up in you. You think about the Lord and what He's done for us. And, and I'm not talking about something fake, buddy. When them tears start rolling down your cheek, that's a good thing. And He said, just writing to you, people. Just, just writing. Just writing, saying uh, that the, the, I'm, I'm writing now, even weeping. They're the enemies 
of the cross of Christ. Good night in the morning. What? People, that's not, that's not a gospel hoedown he's talking about here. This was not the Dove Award, brother, he's writing from. I mean, he is in jail. He was in jail writing this stuff and talking to him out there about Christ and heaven and a resurrection. He said, some of them are the enemies of the cross of Christ. And look here how he describes them. Look how he describes them. Verse 19, whose end is destruction. That's, of course, lost people. Whose God is their belly. <whistles> whose glory is in their shame. Who mind earthly things. You know what they glory in? There's something that's a shame and a disgrace. And their God is their belly. Now look, that's lost people, but Christian people can do glory in their own shame and bring the cross for his approach on the name of Christ as God in their belly. Um, I'm going to tell you all something. We live in America, and we got more food in this country than we know what to do with. You better beware of your God being your belly. You better beware of that. You better beware of it. Look. People say, oh, Brother Danny, you know, you, you, you skinny and you don't eat. Uh, listen, I like food good as anybody in here. Brother, you cut me a ribeye that thick. And, and, uh, and uh, to me, a ribeye steak cooked just right and, or, or strawberry cheesecake fixed just right, like Kelly makes it, and, or that haagen cookie dough chip. They ain't, they ain't nothing in the world no better taste than that. And I could eat it seven days a week. But I am not, I am not going to let food be my God. I'm not going to be a belly worshiper. If you want, I'm going to try this dish, I'm going to try this dish. I mean, there's nothing wrong. I, mean, I don't want the same thing every day, but you better be careful of, of your God being your belly. Tell it no once in a while. Whose glory is in their shame. Like the people I was talking about a minute ago. That shame, that lifestyle, the glory in that. Um, we're supposed to we're supposed to eat to live. But I'm afraid people's got that backwards. They live to eat. <laughs> and and I, I ain't fussing at nobody. I ain't fussing at nobody. I'm a bigger hog as anybody in here. I am. Man, I love it. I love cheese. I love Mexican food. I like Chinese food. I like, look, I like noodles and I love Pepsi. And I, I mean, I love it. I love it. Uh, but uh, I'm not. By the help of the Lord, not going to be brought under the power of any. Like, if I'm at home and uh, and I say, "Good night," I just I just wanted I just I just wanted a, a I just want seafood today. I really want seafood today. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to reach in there and get a can of soup out and heat it up. Because I'm not going to let my bot, my belly order my life around. Amen. I mean, you can if you want to. I'm not going to drive 45 minutes just so my belly tells me I want seafood. I'll get it next week. That's what that's talking about. That's what that's talking about. Don't, don't, don't let your belly dictate you. And don't mind the earthly things. Good night. We're all guilty. Amen. We're all of us. I am. Mind the earthly things. Uh, our, our house, our car, our job, our sports. Uh, mind the earthly things. It's hard not to. Set their affections on things above. And now you gotta live, you gotta make a living, you gotta eat, you gotta you gotta exercise. There's nothing wrong with with, with sports and, and all that, but it's like uh, I think some preachers make a god out of sports and, and the first thing they do when they get up and pull the is talk about their favorite football team. But, I mean, I don't know about that, y'all. I don't know if the Lord I, so I get jealous. I get jealous of that. Ain't nothing wrong with you liking a football team. I had on my strong in the Lord shirt the other morning when I went to the Y and Marion. I started getting backslid, really. I'm a sissy. It was, it was 20-something degrees, and I, I didn't want to run. And I always run in the cold. I run the cold, in the rain, snow, everything. And I was man, I don't want to run. And I'm just going to the Y. And I felt like a sissy. And I had my uh, sweatshirt on, and this guy sitting there, and he said, Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you had a Dallas Cowboys shirt on. <laughs> because that striped gray and that white on it, he thought it was Dallas Cowboys. And I thought, nope. About Jesus, sorry to disappoint you there, dude. Uh, I, I, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna wear something, I want to advertise for the Lord. Amen. And and I said I heard they wasn't doing no good. He said, well, I, and I don't know if they have or not. Really, I just mess with it. And uh, but uh, well, we're running. I have no idea if Dallas Cowboys won a game this year. I have no idea. Don't know. Don't care. Uh, I'm I'm for whoever's playing Duke and North Carolina. <laughs> but. Uh, 
you, you, there's nothing wrong with you having a favorite team. There's nothing wrong with you wearing a, a, a MAGA hat. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with you wearing a, a, a hat, your, your alma mater or whatever. There's nothing wrong with that. But don't be careful. We need to be careful here in America of not letting celebrities, athletes, movie stars. Uh, be careful. If, if a movie star came to Morganton, there'd be people lined up all a mile away wanting to get their autograph to see them. And, you know, that ain't, that ain't exactly. If a man of God comes down, that's what we ought to teach our kids. You know, kids, just whatever they're taught, that's what they, you know, all those little kids going, you see the little kid that had the red skin thing on, he had half his face painted black, and, the other way, and they, they made a big racist thing out of it. Did y'all see that? It was all over the news. And all the kid had was just a, a Washington Redskins outfit on and the red and black colors. And they tried to make a racist thing out of it. And they, they had, to, you know, they had on, but that, that, that poor little kid, he's just doing what he sees adults do. There's nothing wrong with a kid like football. Nothing wrong with a kid playing football or basketball or, or riding a motorcycle like Dak does or playing sports like some of our other kids do. Nothing wrong with that. But you got to keep that stuff in its proper. You got to you got to keep that stuff in check, amen. You've got to. You can't let it take over your life. Who mind earthly things? Uh, verse twenty. For our conversation is in heaven. Our, our conversation is in heaven, y'all. From whence we also look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, as somebody pointed out, I believe uh, I believe Brother Michael, Derek, one of them, whoever's teaching, a couple Sundays ago mentioned about your conversation. Is your your lifestyle? That's another Bible word that in the Bible conversation is lifestyle, and uh, our uh, our lifestyle, our our saviors in heaven, our affections are in heaven, our hope is in heaven, our treasures are in heaven, our our loved ones are in heaven. Our, uh, our conversation is is things up yonder, and we have to live in this world. We have to pay our bills. We have to mow our grass. We have to fix our roof. We have to fix, keep the water. We have to keep the tires on the car. We have to keep the insurance paid. We have to, all this stuff that we got. We got to keep our family going. We got to do stuff with the kids. We got to take kids uh, to the mom. We got to do shopping. We have to be good to our wife or to our husband and spend time with each other and do stuff. We got to, got to. But you need to keep your affections up yonder. Up yonder. Up yonder. Up yonder. And that's what, he, that's what he's saying here. He said, from whence we also look for the Savior. There's a good verse on the coming of the Lord. We're not looking for the Antichrist. We're looking for Jesus Christ. See, if you believe the Antichrist is coming before Jesus, then what you're saying is, you know, worrying about Jesus coming today, he can't. The Antichrist ain't got here yet. Now, people, somebody asked me the other day, they said, Brother Dan, do you believe the Antichrist is already here? And I said, I don't know. He might be. I, I don't know. It, it depends on how he gets here. Uh, he might not have jumped, parachuted out yet, or might be somewhere in the world right now. I don't know that. But I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I'm looking for the Savior, like it said. From whence come the Savior? And guess what's going to happen when the Savior comes? Verse 21, we're done. Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, According to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things, even all subdue all things unto himself. Now you know what he's going to do? He's going to change our vile body. There's another verse. There's another word that changed in the New Bible. None of the New Bibles will say vile. It's hard for a, it's hard for a Greek professor who's got that many degrees in a studio or a or an office or somewhere who believes he's vile. <laughs> Uh, does any anybody in here have any trouble believing you're vile? I don't. You're a better person than I am. I don't have no trouble believing I'm vile. Brother Danny, that's a little strong for me. Uh, you're, you're kidding yourself. Your body's vile. You can't trust it that far. But if the Lord took his hand off of you right now, You'd be mean as any devil in this country or have the potential to be. Your body got sin in it. Well, I'm saved. Still got sin in it. Your body don't get born again when you get saved. 
You're born again in the Spirit. If, you, if it did, you'd never sin. You'd never get sick. You'd never die. You get your new body here. You change our vile body that it's going to be fashioned like His glorious body. We're going to be like Him. Which means we're going to... If you, if you saw Jesus right now in heaven, He would appear to be 33 years old. You know, people say, well, I just can't wait to heaven to see Grandma. Now, Grandma ain't going to be 99 forever. You ain't going to get up there and see a bunch of old people. <laughs> you think a little baby that dies and goes to heaven is going to stay a baby forever and ever and ever? No. Our body will be fashioned like His glorious body. And we'll know everything. And we can walk through walls. And we can eat as much as we want. Glory to God. Bring out the Hagen dazs there, brother. And, and, the, and the Pepsi and... I'll eat, you know, I eat. I like to eat one of them Cinnabons as big as this pulpit. Just stick my face in it and eat my way through like a rat. I, and, and you know, you won't have no, you won't get no calories. You don't get no uh, too much carbs. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. And uh, them fast, our fasting days will be over then, brother. Won't never have to fast again. Won't never have to take a tum or rollade or. Go to the doctor and get you, get you one of them ulcers or something. Uh, and uh, heidel hernia or whatever them things are. Uh, you'll, he'll change your vile body, buddy. He'll change your vile body. And that body will be able to travel at the speed of light. Like he was. He's, he's here in heaven and back down here. Boom, boom, boom. Just like that right there. That's what we're going to be one of these days. And we'll have the mind of Christ. Which means we'll know everybody... You don't have to go around heaven and say, now, who are you now? You'll automatically know everybody there. You ain't going to be a little baby. We'll all be like him, for we shall see him as he is. That's a great hope. What a great hope. Change our vile body. Now, you better watch out for this old vile body. Uh, it, it's flawed. It's flawed. If you don't believe it, your body, you know what your body is when you die? Trash. Like, it's, that's true. Brother Danny, what's that going to do to my self-esteem? I don't know. What do you want me to do? Get up here and lie to you? You know what they're going to do with your body after you die? Are you going to burn it or bury it? That's all you can do with something that nasty. You going to burn it or you going to bury it? Because it stinks so bad you couldn't get a um, half a mile of it. When you die, you burn it or you bury it. But thank God, one day, our body shall be changed like unto his glorious body. Till then, brother, it's a fight every day of our life. All right, let's bow our heads for prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody's talking. Maybe the Lord spoke to you a little bit tonight. I don't know. Maybe something I said. Maybe sometimes God will speak to you and things that the preacher don't even mention. And he'll, bam, a little conviction hit you. If it did, that's what he wants to deal with you about right now. What does he want to deal with you in your life about right now? God. Uh, he said, uh-uh, Brother Danny, I don't want to quit this. I don't want to give up that. Well, he ain't going to hurt you. He ain't going to hurt you. He ain't going to hurt you. Let's do it right now. Heavenly Father, we pray right now that you'd help every one of us. Lord, help me especially. More than anybody in here, I need this. Set my affection on things above, not just on things on this earth. Lord, help us to keep our eyes on the prize and, and the resurrection and the, all, the, all the, the stuff, Lord, that that's waiting on us in heaven. Lord, I pray that you bless us, Lord, as we try to live for you in this old sin-cursed world. Help us to be a witness and soul winner. Fill us with the Holy Ghost, Lord. Bless all of them people watching from home and online. I thank you for them. I pray that you'd bless them. I pray that you'd work in every single heart, and every single life. I pray that you bless all them kids back there, Lord. Lord, help us to realize what you've entrusted us with, this uh, huge amount of young people that come here to our church. I pray that you speak to every single one of them. Bless them. I pray you get us ready for the weekend, Lord, for our visitation Sunday, Saturday morning. I pray that you'd lead us, and guide us, help us to go to the right places, say the right words, do the right thing. I pray that your will will be done in our life now. Lord, bless everybody here as they go back to work tomorrow or whatever they got to do. Lord, bless all the kids going back to school. God, get us ready for Sunday. Move in here in great power. We ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. You're at liberty to go. Have a good one. And uh, we'll see y'all this weekend. Come praying. It's supposed to warm up.